G'day guys, my name's Pistachio, and for today's video we'll be taking a look at X-Ray Pad's new Equate Plus V2 Kiwami. Kiwami in simple Japanese means ultimate or extreme, which I can kind of assume they use the term to label the performance, speed, or the quality of the pad. So the EQ Plus V2 is labeled as a speed balance pad. Now the pads that grab my attention the most are going to be the speed pads, hence my interest in the EQ Plus V2. Now, from my understanding, the EQ Plus V2 is a redone or, well, kind of an improved version of the original EQ Plus, which I have never used before, so I have no really comparison to do between the two. So instead, I've chosen my two fastest cloth pads to put them against each other and go against the Equate, those being the Spire Loki and the Artisan Hien Soft. Before we delve deeper, I'll be going into the specifics of the contender for today. X-Ray Pad has quite the variety of custom options on every single pad they've created thus far, which is super dope stuff. But we'll solely be focusing on the EQ Plus V2's options. Now, number one is the sizing. We have the choices of large being a 360 by 300, XL being 450 by 400, and lastly an XL square, which I'm a very huge fan of, and the one sitting on my desk right now, coming in at 500 by 500. Then, of course, we have the colors and prints. The new EQ Plus V2 currently comes in the options of red, black, blue, and pink. And soon you'll be able to get a custom where you can send an image or a color in for a custom print, which I'm pretty sure will affect the qualities of the pad by really a slight bit, but not, nothing really to kind of make a fuss about. Now, regardless, red stood out way more for me, so I definitely had to jump on the train for that. There are no thickness changes, so you'll be limited to the 4mm thickness that they give you. Now, that kind of covers the options for a custom equate. Now, how does it come packaged, though? It comes in a pretty standard box with some nice artwork, and then inside we find a dark blue velvety sleeve containing the pad all rolled up. Now, usually that does concern me, but seeing as the pad is comprised of a nice rubber base, just like the Spire Loki, it wasn't really anything to fuss about. Because the base adds quite a bit of heft and density to the pads, it basically rolls up flat on the desk with only a little bit of curving on the sides and give it a couple minutes and it's completely flat. Now, seeing as the pad has a rubber base, it provides a strong density and the grip is fantastic, as it should be. And it has near the exact same base as the Spire Loki, resembling the zigzag pattern, but I did realize the Equate base is a bit glossier, and the zigzags are a bit thinner for some reason. So, I drag my fingertip across both pads to just kind of showcase the difference, which is not necessary at all, but I thought it might be a fun thing. Now, although it has literally no change to how the pad acts, it felt it was something to show in comparison, just because. Now, moving on to the stitching. It is just all right. It is a slight bit above the surface level and it's pretty soft stitching as well, which I'd assume is the reason there's a fair bit of spots where the red threading from the surface peeks through and is a bit frayed. It's just an aesthetics thing rather than a hindrance, but that's basically it. Lastly, the main attraction is the surface. The Equate almost resembled a Hien, just like the Ambition pad I recently reviewed, but it is pretty odd though. To describe the Equate surface is strange. It's very rough, but because it's uncoated it feels like a very dry kind of rough, very sandpaper-like, without the abrasiveness or uncomfortability, which is a big bonus. With that in mind though, it causes a bloody great overall experience. Now, as I've said at the start of the video, X-Ray Pad has labeled this pad as a balanced speed pad. And that is bloody accurate. I would say it does slightly, like by a fraction, lead more towards speed, which once again, I'm very huge a fan of. The static friction, which is the amount of effort it takes to kind of get a mouse into a glide, is pretty close to nothing, even with all the mice and the skates I've tested on it, which I'll showcase later on as a comparison with the aforementioned pads. Now, how is the glide, of course? The dynamic friction, which is the amount of resistance you experience during your glide across the surface, is consistent and smooth and there's a very little amount of friction and resistance with, once again, regardless of the mouse or skates I've tested on it. 
And of course, leading into all that is the stopping power. It is strong. Not mud, but strong in the sense of any extreme movements can come to an abrupt stop if need be. Now, with that said, here goes a comparison of my different mice and mouse skates. First being the HSK Pro 4K with stock skates. Second, we have the Final Viper 4K with Spire Slides. Third is the Endgame Gear XM2 WE with Ali Dots. Last is the Starlight 12 Phantom Medium with X-Ray Pads Obsidian Skates. They have been used across the most comparable pads in my collection. Aspire Loki and Artisan Hien Soft. So, unfortunately I couldn't find the mid to make the comparison as best as possible, but the show had to still go on. First is going to be the Loki, second is the Hien Soft, and lastly the Equate Plus V2. So, with the testing I've done, the EQ is a fair bit faster in static and dynamic friction than a low key, but is a bit slower than the Heian in the X axis, yet it has a better stopping power. And although that's the case, I've had a pretty okay experience with the EQ plus V2. Kind of needing to point a few things out that I've experienced is the stitching. It's not really performance changing, but I'd like to see a stitch that's at least the same level as the surface and it's tighter so it doesn't have parts of the surface kind of fraying out. Second is waves. Now, regardless of which skates I've used, but more prominent being dots, the surface makes me extremely aware of the textures and also has the feeling of waves or grooves in the surface. If it's really slow strokes across the pad, they aren't noticeable, but of course me playing more fast-paced and tracking heavy games like Apex, it makes the experience slightly distracting. With that being said though, I'd love to point out some positives too. The way it handles moisture and humidity is outstanding. These last couple of weeks in NZ have been very up and down with the humidity and heavy rainfall, but in the time I tested out the pad, it had no feeling of damp or clamminess. The artwork is dope and bright, and the options off launch are very solid for sizing and colors. Now, regardless of how aggressive the swipes across the pad are, it shifts nowhere and just lays still where it's placed. Compression is near to nothing, so dragging down with flat sided mouse skates that scrape the surface is of no issue. The surface is unique and a very good twist on what speed pads are right now. It's bloody consistent no matter which pad you switch from, but overall I would have really 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 loved to put this in my top 5 pads ever, even as my favourite hybrid speed pad to this day. If it weren't for the odd feeling of grooves or waves in the pad and the kind of hyper awareness of the scratchy texture but the last one is probably on me though so that's gonna wrap it up for x-ray pads new equate plus v2 thanks for watching guys take care and peace